Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey. How's everyone doing today? You guys ready to talk about some metal? Yeah. Sweet. We're just setting up real quick, but I want this panel to be more about you guys. Um, Doug up front is going to probably kick us off after I share a couple stories with these guys and introduce ourselves. And then I'll carry the mic to whoever. And then Doug will pass the mic off and you guys can have fun conference with us. I'll start off, I'm Jacob. I am the admin of the Kaiju United group on Facebook that I have been running. You guys are more than free to join that. We've been expanding that a little bit. I go to almost every Godzilla Kaiju convention in the country. I'm just obsessed with this stuff. And I want to bring more of it here. Uh, I'm Braxton. Uh, I don't have a name tag because I joined this panel last minute. So here we are. Uh, massive Godzilla fan. Uh, this guy sat down with me over one summer and showed me all of them. So I've been hooked ever since. So I'm glad to be here. And you work at Dr. Bolt's. So shop at Dr. Bolt's. Yeah, come shop at Dr. Bolt's. My name is Sean Smithson. I used to write for Fangoria Magazine. I contributed to Movie Maker and some other <coughs> periodicals. I used to write for TwitchFilm.com, now uh, known as Screen Anarchy. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm an old man. I'm the, the, probably the oldest person up here. And uh, I grew up watching Godzilla initially um, on a 16 millimeter print in Baltimore through my godfathers who were film students. And then later, of course, on the Saturday afternoon, Creature Feature Double Feature type programs and yeah, yeah, obsessive. Seeing Mothra is one of my first memories ever. My name's Sarah. Uh, I'm the I'm the fan. I grew up watching it on TV whenever they show one of the, the English films. Thanks for coming, everybody. How's everybody's weekend been so far? Awesome. Cool, cool. I guess I'll kick this one off. Uh, my favorite Godzilla bad guy is the Smog Monster Hera. Pretty obvious. This is a print done by an artist attending our panel. His name is Lens of Nations. Lens of Nations. Right over there. He's right there. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Like his boot. Check out his booth. The art is really, really, really nice. He's got some sweet art. Um, I just, I like Hedora. Um, the film itself is just a fun, trippy, time capsule of the 70s, basically. It's the 70s incarnate come to life. I just like him because he's gross and weird looking and smudgy and all the art of him is always really colorful and vibrant and I just really like it. Who has not seen Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster or Godzilla vs. Hidora? Yeah. Okay, cool, so almost everybody in the room has seen it. Sweet. The thing I like about Hidora, he's, he's the easy go-to favorite for me. I have some others that are a little deeper dives though, but again, the design work, like yesterday when we talked about Beyond Godzilla, the fantasy and science fiction films of Toho, my pick was Dagora, which isn't even a guy in a suit. It basically looks like a blanket with tentacles. It's more like a Lovecraftian creature. And I like Hidora for the same reasons, because he's so abstract and amorphous. And as a kid, and I, I had a pretty strong constitution as a kid, I saw, like The Exorcist when it first came out, way, way too young. But there was something super creepy about Hedorah that struck me more as a, as a horror monster, even though now it's obvious he's like an embodiment of the environment. He's actually, or it's actually almost a good guy, or at least a, a storm and not some malevolent creature, but the design is insane. Yeah, so I like Hedorah. And the message, the ecological, uh, ecological message. Do you guys have any other favorites to share, Sarah Braxton? Uh, yeah, um, I'm kind of torn between Gigan and King Ghidorah. Wow. Um, two of them from outer space, with here with no other reason than to mess up Earth. Um, I think I'm leaning more towards King Ghidorah. You know, Batman's got his Joker, Godzilla's got his King Ghidorah. Mine is Mecha Godzilla because I. I will always love giant robots, a giant monster, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's just, it's always an interesting take to see somebody take everything Godzilla is good at and use it against him to defeat him. Did Mecha Godzilla ever fight Mecha Kong? No, I wish that should okay. happen. Yeah. That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> there was a canceled Godzilla film when they couldn't get the rights to Kong, they were going to make Godzilla versus Mechanicom. 
But then uh, RKO was like, that's still King Kong's likeness. He can't do that. Dude. Wasn't there also the uh, Godzilla versus the Wolfman? Yeah, that was a fan film made by a guy at Toho. He just worked on the movies and was like, I'm gonna make my own. <laughs> <laughs> Did you grab any trailers? I, I have a few clips of uh, Kaiju we can show as we recognize um, some of our favorites. So I'm just gonna pass it to Doug first and see what he had in mind for his favorite. Well, me personally, I've always been a big fan of Rodan. He's like a, a biological giant fighter jet. And I love things that fly. I think it's good to remember too, it's, it's easy to think like that he came a lot later in everything, but isn't that like the film right after Godzilla? They're still building. Yeah. yeah. Godzilla was 54, Rodan was 56. It's kind of weird that Rodan did not become the, uh, the Ghidorah for Godzilla since it's like right there. It's the first. Yeah, it was interesting how that developed with Ghidorah the Three Headed Monster, which I do have a clip of. He becomes like Godzilla's rival. They're like equals. Like Rodan's immune to Godzilla's atomic breath in the show era. And I think that's really neat. Let's watch a Ghidorah clip. We have one. Braxton, do I just drag it over? Uh, you'll have to. <laughs> and then we'll talk about the uh, the classic King Ghidorah maybe uh, against the American version. Oh, this It's always right this way. Is it over there? Oh, Personally, 
is that in the Godzilla universe, there's been other alien kaijus, you know? Okay. But they all resemble some sort of earthly creature. Like, Gigan resembles, like, a cyborg, like, chicken. Ghidorah's, like, a dragon. But Orca is just, he's just something else. I, it's like, that's him right there. You know? And I especially like how, I find it interesting how he starts out in, like, a sort of ufo as in the first like 40 minutes of the film. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a reference to Dokura because it kind of is like yeah. a tentacle weird alien monster called the Millennium, and then it turns yeah. into this thing and tries to eat Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's just such an alien design and I find it interesting. You know, because uh, I was talking about um, Dogora yesterday and in the first Hellboy, uh, Del Toro Hellboy. The, the tentacle creature is actually a direct and purposeful reference to Dagora. This reminds me of the first giant kaiju you see in Pacific Rim. Yeah. I, I almost wonder if that's another Del Toro reference. I mean, because he's a, a, obviously a huge fan. I think he looks a lot like the uh, Dark Crystal Garthen. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like my mother-in-law. <laughs> Something about those hands just makes me really uncomfortable. Those are some rabbit hands. Big, meaty. Claws. Definitely needs a pedicure or a manicure. Probably a pedicure too, I'd imagine. The fingers are that bad, the feet must be terrible. Sweet. Does anyone else have anything? Thank you, Chris. Right, us. So, um, Rodan is, I'm very new to the Godzilla fandom, so I know literally nothing. Uh, Rodan is Welcome. one of my all time favorite, just, I guess, side characters within the Godzilla universe. And to me, I think that's because I struggle to understand what he represents. Like, as you guys talked about yesterday, Mothra and King Kong both represent cultural appropriation. And um, Godzilla is nuclear warfare, but Rodan, what does he represent to all of you? Rodan, to me, is the wrath of nature. Because in the original Rodan film, it took them blowing up a volcano and making it erupt just to take out the two Rodans. Yeah, in the original, there's two Rodans, so double trouble. But uh, it, it always was like, Rodan just is here. He was in the volcano before he came alive and woke up, and then it took the volcano to kill him. He's always been kind of embodied with nature. He's one of the best examples of the earthbound, like, god-like kaiju, rather than the, the outer space alien ones. Yeah, and I, I talked about this yesterday, but there's, there's kind of this not, I don't know if it's, intentional or not, but there's these threads running through these early Toho movies about things coming up out of the ground to destroy humanity. And I feel like Rodan is kind of part of that, just the second of what else is hiding in the earth that could destroy us. Uh, I'd like to ask real quick, how many of you are new to the fandom? How many of this is like kind of your first exposure? So a lot of you who are new, you're going to find as you're watching these films that a lot of Godzilla's monsters, they're ecological terrors. It is Earth fighting back. And um, more often than not, it's about power balance uh, with humans and nature. It's hippie. It's hippie stuff. <laughs> uh, I think we got one right down here. Red shirt or the kid? Yeah, let's do, let's do him. All right. Um... So I've seen this like monster of a Godzilla, but I haven't seen it in a mu movie yet. But um, it's kind of like this plant thing where it has like balls inside of it with like orange. I don't know what it is. Why but I love it. Why I love it. I love it. It's like a giant rose. Like a giant rose of a rose is a monster. That's a violante. That's a really good one. Yeah, I got a picture. That's it looks like that? Yeah. Also, um, like, why does it have so many heads and what's the story? So, Biolante's story, um, there's a mad scientist in the movie Godzilla vs. Biolante from 1989. It's a fun 80s sci-fi movie. Um, it's got a nice rock and roll soundtrack, a lot of fun human characters. Anyways, Biolante, this mad scientist, uh, found some Godzilla cells, and he was like, what if I mix those with some plant cells? What would happen? And then, for some weird reason, because this is a Japanese movie, he was like, well, my daughter's dead. What happens if I mix her cells <laughs> with the plant cells and the Godzilla cells? No. Did you get Biolante? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Parson. Do we have a clip of Bible on tape? I believe so. Let me double check. So have you just not seen the film or are mom and dad like not yet? Everything we know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, dude? Julian. Hey, Julian. He started at Movement in Titan in kindergarten. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter, was, she's 30 now. When she was in preschool, it was a co-op preschool, so you had to volunteer once a week, right? And we had this real granola mom there who was doing the music and she bring her her acoustic guitar. And I'm a musician by profession and she left. So I took over the music and the first song I taught my daughter's preschool class was a very short and basic version of Wooster Cults Godzilla. And you have not lived until you have heard a room full of preschoolers <laughs> sing Godzilla. It was a And it's pretty like phones. So again, when my daughter's 30 and she was in preschool, I would kill to have footage of that. I unfortunately do not have footage of Violante. Uh, I do have a clip of Orga, if anyone's still interested. I'm going to see the Orga clip. Yeah. I might have to skip ahead a little bit. You guys see it? Yeah. yeah. So there's this ship he comes in. He's a spaceship at first. And I'll, I'll skip ahead in a minute just because it's like a five minute clip. So you guys are really, really into it. I'm ready to watch the whole movie. We just watched Godzilla. This is uh, Godzilla 2000. This one was actually released in American theaters in 1999 or 2000 or somewhere around there. I was not old enough to watch it in the theaters, but some of you guys might be. Guardians of the Galaxy and the MCU has proven that the, the B string can turn around and the film be turned into to A list. I also love this design of Godzilla. It's one of my favorite designs. So do you 
you know anything about the difference in the way they film uh, the monsters in this and in the show era? Because this looks a lot, I mean, it's probably like great speed and all that stuff to get a, a bigger sweep, but it looks a lot bigger. Who directed this? No I, pressure. I, I don't know who directed this. Yeah, that's that's Orga. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah, that's a good choice, man. That's gonna push me back to that film now. I'm literally gonna go and watch it tonight. If if any of you played the Xbox or GameCube fighting games, oh, oh, Godzilla's Coil yeah. Monsters Melee or Godzilla Save the Earth, Orga is like S tier. It's yeah. like super dumb. Mm -hmm. Do you have something in the front? Yeah, I was gonna say that um, my favorite of the big bads was uh, Destroya. Because he brought uh, Godzilla to the very brink, so yeah, he lived up to his name. There, there he is, right there. The abomination created by humanity, in fact, with the oxygen uh, destroyer. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I believe, Destroyer is a female, if I recall correctly, according to the movie. So you got some vicious-looking women in the Godzilla's robes gallery. You got Biolante and Destroyer. And <laughs> Gibbous. Mega and Mega Girls. You know, uh, I'm going to say something first, uh, heretical. I love King Ghidorah. He's, he's like in like the, the basic first round, but my favorite King Ghidorah at this point is the one from the Monsterverse. Yeah. I do. It's like, I mean, like, I love the original, the OG. It's really, really... Uh, again, at this point, almost like old Harryhausen stuff. And you know, Ray Harryhausen said something really astute. He goes, when it looks too realistic, it becomes mundane. I don't know if I agree, because I also lived through the original Spider-Man TV show on CBS, where his webs look like your mom's macrame <laughs> plant holders. Yeah. Um, I, I like the, the, the photorealism of, of what they can do now. But the original the original rubber suit guys, it's still really romantic and it's its own thing for me now, but the King Ghidorah in the MonsterVerse was threatening and I really liked how they were able to really make each head have its own personality. There was the dumb one, and there was the one that was kind of snarky and always in a bad mood. Who, who else is Team Kevin? <laughs> yes, Kevin. Was it? Did you have something? So, similar to you, um, I really loved him in the MonsterVerse. My first ever Godzilla movie was Invasion of the Astro Monster. Right. I got thrown straight into the deep end. I had no yeah, context. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but, uh, so, like, I remember watching that, like, uh, Godzilla King of Monsters, and they were like, oh, he, like, in ancient times he was called Monster Zero, and I was like, yeah, he was! Yes. <laughs> but, um, with that, that kind of leads into my question, with um, Godzilla, it can very often feel like you're just kind of thrown into the deep end with how wacky and how much like lore there is. And where would you recommend a good starting place? Because I want to introduce my little sister to the series. I'd say Godzilla uh, versus Hedora or Godzilla versus a smog monster because it's far enough along in, you know the tone you're in. The first film's dark, yeah. you know, and it's a little misleading at this point to what it all becomes. I like this one more, um, uh, God, I was going to say Godzilla vs. Megalon, which I'm old enough to have seen that in the theaters, like if, when I lived in Chico, I saw it like 14 times, and I would leave school and go, I went to the movies so much they just started letting me in during the week, because <laughs> I lived three blocks from a movie theater called the El Rey in Chico, um, including rated R movies, I slept out the afternoon by myself. Is, um, is Hedora the first one where Godzilla's the hero? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That is yeah, so that's the, another good reason to start there, I guess. Yeah. That is the first film where he goes from kind of just a, he goes from like a villain for the first few to just kind of a jerk in the 60s. Yes. And I really like when Godzilla's just kind of a jerk. Um, to bounce off of Sean, I would recommend Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, the movie right before Monster Zero because I think it's the perfect monster match movie. You've got Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan together yeah. uniting to fight Ghidorah. And it's fun, it's got Akira Takarada, one of the most charismatic actors in Toto's library who passed away this year, rest in peace. But um, 
that's where I would go with that. But yeah, Pedro was the first superhero Godzilla movie where he was kind of like Gamera. He was like the friend of all children. That's a really good question. Also, I want to give a shout out to Mothra and the Monster Verse. It's like yeah. so yes. well done. I, you know what? I, that, that brings me to a, to a quick point. Um, again, having brought up the Ray Harryhausen was my first cheer up. Like before I even discovered Kiss, there was Ray Harryhausen, and I, I you know, and no one's more romantic about that stuff than I am. But at the same time, like when I get on the internet, it's 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 almost a thing now. Like you're not a fan unless you hate it, and like the people who are who are complaining about the CGI. Had they done a film with a bunch of guys in rubber suits, they wouldn't have gone to see it. It wouldn't have been. Is anybody anti CGI in these films? And I'm not being confrontational, or is everybody cool with it? Because I think it looks really good. And it's great to again see these monsters rendered in a photorealistic fashion, finally. Anyway, go ahead, Doug. So I actually started out in the start of Godzilla. Um, Kimonga being the my Brave. favorite. My favorite. Um, and in Game of the Monsters, when they're all coming together, when Gabor does the call, you start to see a lot more of the monsters come in and you get a glimpse of a spidery monster. And I'm hoping that's actually Kumonga. Do you actually think that we'd be able to see more minor monster characters like that in the future, hopefully? I would, I would love to. Um... Because my favorite kaiju of all time is Baragon. I am a yeah. Baragon fanatic. Um, Gorosaurus and this guy are number two and three. Um, I was hoping that was Kumanga. I've, I've heard, according to like the merchandising, it was some kaiju called like Sicilla or something. They, they should have just bought the license and made it Kumanga. It's a spider kaiju. It, yeah, it was probably one of my favorites. And I do have one other question, just related to him. Do you think that since then, uh, overly grown spider monsters have been just overdone? Or do you think that it's it, it's a good generic monster? Underdone. Like, I love The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 2 of all the ice spiders. It creeped me out. But I'm, I'm easily affected, and I love giant spider movies <laughs> like, you know, Tarantula and Eight-Legged Freaks. Um, I want to go back to what you said about um, using the more minor creatures, though. I think yes, because a lot like the MCU finding that, you know, a once B or C string group like Guardians of the Galaxy being able to become so incredibly successful is attractive because um, they are underused. There's less baggage. They can, they're more malleable. You can do with them what you want without the core fan base moaning and groaning so much because they haven't been defined. I mean, you see that again in the MCU a lot. Yeah, I think that um, we're starting to kind of enter an era where Toho is being more kind of liberal with their rights. Because for a long time, it was, Toho did not want anybody to touch Godzilla but them. They made Disney seem like that. Yeah, the, the inside joke at G-Fest, I know Lenny knows this, is that the Toho lawyers were ninjas. They were hiding, waiting for you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, Universal had to pay some amount of money to use those characters even in the background, so hopefully Toho sees how popular movies have been and let them expand on their characters. Yeah, I really think that uh, throwing Rodan and Mothra and Ghidorah into the MonsterVerse was kind of their test run. I think so, too. I did want to comment one more thing before I let this stroke make his comment. Um, I was ecstatic to see Jet Jaguar come back and got to a singular point. That was, I was so happy. He was the main character. But uh, I hope that trend continues. Anyways, take it away.